This is a question that I think Nicole might be able to answer, but anyone else is free to jump in. Um, I remember in our initial discussions about the um, kind of stories we were wanting to tell with this issue, um, you expressed some interest in how media, mainstream media, media in general has um, portrayed or covered MMIR injustice um, generally. And I know that there is more, you know, people are beginning to speak out more on this and there's more public awareness maybe at this point, but I'm wondering if you can um, speak a little bit about how MMIR coverage in the media has been inadequate and in some cases maybe um, further contributed to injustice. Um, from my perspective, there's a couple of different ways that the media has failed. And I do think it's changed a little bit over the last couple of years, you know, with the work of um, Senator Kunash and Sheila and Mary and all these advocates of uh, raising awareness that the media has started to be in with um, Savannah. I think that media really increased their awareness with that particular case as well, because it was so terrifying. Um, but I think so just lack of coverage is one thing, right? You know, if a, if a white child goes missing, the media is all on it right away, immediately covering it, getting it out there. I mean, we know that the Amber Alerts as well as the local coverage when someone is missing is really important to, um, so if they are being trafficked, you know, they're caught before they're moved too far away from the local area and things like that. Um, or before they're harmed in some uh, worse way than just being trafficked, which is already obviously a bad enough harm as it is. Um, I think the other way that the media kind of fails, and this is um, the MMIW injustice is just one example. I mean, there's also all sorts of other cases where black and brown people get stigmatized by the media and their poor lifestyle choices or bad behavior or you know their um, things like that are brought up by the media when it's really irrelevant um, to, the, to the case at hand, um, as opposed to focusing on the person who actually did the um, crime and the person who should be the focus of our negative attention, the media tends to focus the negativity back on the, onto the, the victim um, by yeah, highlighting you know, addiction problems or the things that, again, may or may not be directly relevant to, to, the, to the case at hand. And so um, I think that those are some of the things. And I mean, you know, we see this as well, just with like, um, you know, these cases of like, if a Black man has, um, a, a, accused of a crime, they show him in his prison orange jumpsuit on the cover of the news article, whereas like when the young white guy is charged with the crime, he's shown in his college graduation picture with his suit and tie on, and you know, other ways that um, subtly the media conveys um, or, or reinforces stereotypes that we have about certain groups of people. So I guess that's um, a general answer. They will, they will question the legitimacy of these sort of things. And it's not just the media, but it's also the police. Um, you know, for a long time, there are many that have gone missing that were never reported because the communities knew that if they went to the police, they'd be dismissed or brushed off or the legitimate investigation would not happen. Uh, when I, uh, when Standing Rock happened um, afterwards, a, a, a woman was telling me how her, her niece went missing. And um, the mom went to the police out there at, to say that her daughter was missing. And they, you know, like literally said, we don't have time to look for her. Um, she probably has a new boyfriend. She ran away. She went to somewhere at a party. I mean, they just did nothing, absolutely nothing. And uh, so the aunt started her own investigation basically and just started asking around and within two weeks was able to discover what happened to her niece. And unfortunately, it meant that she had to go to North Dakota and bring her niece's body back um, for burial. And the police did, there was no police involvement at all in that. And so, you know, that's, that's just one of the big issues, of course, there's jurisdictional issues, uh, whether it's the tribal police uh, or the county police or the FBI or the BIA, you know, there's all, it's so complicated as well. 
but the problem is that that these different entities were also not communicating with each other or like legally were not allowed to to work with each other or share data and so those are some of the fixes and i think that you know sort of uh, you know without um, legislation, some of the departments have started to sort of share each other, share information with each other and maybe work together, um, you know, on their own without having to be instructed. But there's uh, parts of this that we have to legislate that says you have to work together. You have to share data. We're going to create a common database and um, we're going to continue working on this. So that's really our hope. 